using polypaint. Polypaint does not require UVs, okay? So if you were an illustrator and didn't want to mess around with UVs, you wouldn't have to make UVs, even though it's so easy to make UVs now. But before it wasn't so. It was awful to make UVs in ZBrush. We had to use other programs, Blender and stuff like that. Blender's still amazing, though. I won't dispel Blender, but I'm just saying it was awful. But I'm still going to show you polypaint and show you some stuff that you can do with layers. So let's let's use like our scientific thing here to first start out default. So here, I'm just going to fill this object white. Whoops. Let's take off a mask. And set this to 100%. Okay. So, by default, I have a white sphere with bumps. Okay, so on on one of these layers, what I'm going to do is make a new layer. And I would rename these, okay? Text 1 or something like that. So on this one, I'm going to colorize this uh, a base color. I'm going to go over to the standard brush and see what's going on here. So I got my color. I got my RGB. It's at 122%. There is no mask involved. Make sure there's no mask. And I should be able to fill this object with this color. And if I can't, I'll paint it in. There we go. Huh. Weird. So that exists on that layer. Okay, so what I want to do is make a new layer, name this text 2, and now you can really get the understanding of why you should rename them, because by default they're called Untitled 1 every time. And on this layer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that masking and mask by cavity. I'm going to sharpen the mask a little bit. I'm going to go up, paint some of that in, okay, good, going to make a new layer, and on this layer, I'll name it text 3, and this time I'm just going to pick maybe a different hue here so and this time I'm going to use some kind of alpha okay so RGB add and I'm just going to place some blue dots around. Clear that mask. And all that did was it popped it into the top, but not the bottom of the thing, because it was still masked off, right? I can also mask by hue. So it masks by the hue of blue. Okay, and I can sharpen that mask up. And I can go in here and add some, maybe some lighter spots in here. And I got this cool colored object. I love it. 
And I'm going to clear all that out. So what's amazing about this is you could take and now lower any of these that you want. So I like that better, right? Because it's, it's a little less apparent. Uh, this one, you know, if I wanted to texture bake off or reverted, I could do that. Okay. And I can get some really nice things going on. So now maybe this is in the snow. <laughs> so keeping your textures on layers is very handy. There's no doubt about it because you can get that halfway in between of what you're really trying to get across. Okay. So keep that in mind as when we do the assignment. Because, you know, one of the things is, is a very uniform texture across the mesh. And that's a good way of storing all the information so you can get that look that you are looking for as far as what the reference would look like or what kind of material would be. Keep it in the back of your head. All right. On to the next video.